You're watching the BHS Files. I'm Josh, and with me, as always, is Eric. How's everybody doing? Hello. And we're back tonight. It's just going to be me and Eric tonight. No Jason yep, tonight. Jason can make it. So uh, we're tackling a subject that Eric's been delving into quite heavily here lately, and I'm kind of dipping my toe into Lucio Filci movies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric's been watching a shitload of them lately and talking to me about them, so we figured let's go ahead and talk about some on the show. Right, been getting into a lot of uh, Italian uh, movies from the 70s and 80s, Giallo, horror, um, mainly Fulci, Baba, and uh, Argento, but a few others that I can't remember. Um, uh, my wife's been up watching those with me, and, you know, Josh, you know, that might raise your eyebrows a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you wouldn't think she'd be into, be into it necessarily, but... Uh, we're enjoying it quite a bit. This was, uh, she watched this with me. It was her first, uh, Fulci. Oh, wow. Uh, and she actually enjoyed it. So, and, and I don't think she would have if she didn't, uh, have some kind of understanding of some other Italian films first. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, some like Argento films that we had watched. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we watched uh, blood and black lace, uh, Baba's blood and black lace, which she enjoyed as well. And uh, just kind of, getting used to bad dubbing and <laughs> you know understanding the what you're getting into you know um, yeah what what's helped me with the dubbing is watching all the old bond movies because all the old bond movies were dubbed oh yeah so it's just kind of par for the course for bond so watching sure. the Fulci movies and whatnot it's been like okay well this is nothing to me now uh we're so used to reading subtitles now anyway that right. it's you well, know, they're whatever. not subtitled in many cases. They're right, right. They're dubbed in English. You can't even get the Italian audio for it. And a lot of these, you know, the stuff on on Shutter and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, tonight we're talking about Fulci's The Beyond from 1981. Uh, Eric picked this one. Uh, obviously, we've been he's been delving into the Italian stuff here lately. So, what was it that about The Beyond that made you want to talk about it on the show, Eric? Uh, well. We, we talked, Jason wasn't going to make it, so we mm -hmm. thought maybe we should watch some Italian, uh, <laughs> watch an Italian film, because, uh, you know, we thought we might get some pushback there. He's he's mentioned not wanting to watch Giallo. Maybe he would, I, I actually think he would like this movie. Um, I've been yeah, I mean, I was kind of bummed that he didn't get to see it, because I feel like this might be, a, like, gory enough and, and horror enough to bring jason on board but i uh, think i'm pretty sure jason's seen uh fulci's zombie the the quote yeah. unquote sequel to dawn of the dead um, this is much better than zombie though yeah in, i would in my I, opinion. I would agree um zombie was the only other fulci i had seen up until recently and then when you started watching them i went back and i watched house of house by the cemetery Mm -hmm. and uh there was another one Con conquest i think it was oh the was conquest the other one? yeah i watched yeah. that one that's a wild one and uh th these are some wild movies man like if you're not used to watching these movies they're kind of weird to to get into uh because this is this will be the first thing i'll kind of throw out there about watching these is i feel like with these italian films you're literally just thrown into a situation that they don't give you a whole lot of explanation about uh like that's one thing i've noticed with like zombie and house by the cemetery it's like yes the stories are quite simple but they just throw you right into them and be like hey catch up like you're gonna have to catch on to what we're talking about or you're not gonna want know what the hell's going on in this movie yeah i mean uh uh an aspect of the giallo films this isn't a, these aren't giallo films but a big aspect of those is you know a, a someone coming from out of town Mm -hmm. uh you know uh, an american in rome or something like that and they're thrust into a situation they're suddenly embroiled in some kind of serial killer you know generally a murder they witness a murder mm -hmm. or something like that um and i feel like these are similar in in storytelling in the sense of there there's not a lot of explanation a right. story is really not as important as style in most cases here oh, yeah. and um although the plots can get kind of complex and confusing so it's kind of funny because they get plotty but they're they don't spend enough time explaining anything yeah it it, it gets a little confusing I, I i would say um well interestingly enough with the beyond here we do have someone coming from 
another place right uh and uh to a new town so there there is some like jalo you know similarities here yeah and when we when we when you first start watching this we're not going to have a back in time segment for this one tonight we're just kind of going off the cuff and and talking about some some fulci here but um just to get in right into, right into the movie like we've talked about wax work on the show in the past and the beginning of this movie really kind of reminded me of that opening of Waxwork. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, with with somebody being attacked and something going on. It's it's also kind of similar to the to to the newer Evil Dead, the 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 remake of Evil Dead that came out. Where oh, you've got yeah. that introduction of the whatever crazy shit's about to happen in this movie, and then it you know has a time jump and goes somewhere else. Um, but you right. get a really good sense of like where the gore is going to go in this movie, and like. But but again, you've got a mystery here. It's like, what the hell's going on? Why are they beating this guy like with a yeah. steel? I don't know what it was, but it, it it's incredibly well. Did you want to read the the um the summary, or I can read? It's just the the blur. Yeah, let's here. let's just get a little blurb about what it, what so, it is here. So it says a young woman inherits an old hotel in Louisiana, where following a series of supernatural accidents, she learns that the building was built over one of the entrances to hell. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, like you said, we start in in the in 1927 or something like that. Um, like 20 years prior to this. Right. Um, yeah, 1920, 60 years prior. Excuse me. So, so this is a, a flashback, and yeah, we're in Louisiana. You've got a, a mob coming to kill this guy who seems rather innocent. They don't explain this stuff very well. No. Uh, I actually, I've seen this movie twice. This is my second time. And I, after this, still had to look up. Like, I understood kind of what happened, but I, mm -hmm. I was like, who is that guy, the, the painter? You yeah, know, he, the seem, guy? he seems harmless. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like you, Apparently, uh, he's, he's a warlock, and he is, he is, uh, he is setting up like a, a um, uh, what do you call it? You know, like a, like a spell or like a, um, mm -hmm. a ritual that will open this gate to hell and the final step of the of the ritual is th for him to be nailed to the wall or whatever so See, like those guys kind of complete that for him i i always thought he was a victim but yeah yeah like watching it i've, I've only been i only got to watch it the one time i will say i started it one night around midnight <laughs> which was yeah. probably a bad call and uh got about uh, I got I got about to the point where we where the it kicks into well quote unquote modern day and she gets the hotel and whatnot and I so I kind of I kind of dozed off watching it so uh, but the next night I actually sat down and gave it my full attention and you just telling me that is blowing my mind like I the I'd fact say, that I, like like yeah I thought he was the victim in all of this but you I, you yeah. just gave it a spin that I didn't even think about. Well, it certainly makes him more scary, like for the rest of the film when he shows up, like mm -hmm. thinking he was, you know, doing this stuff on purpose. Right. Um, but yeah, I thought he was kind of an unwilling, you know, maybe the the evil got to him or something. They they clearly thought he was a threat. Uh, but yeah, so it does not explain much, and it goes pretty quickly. Uh, you know, it's what is it ninety something minutes or uh oh, oh it's, it's not even it's it's yeah it's under 90 yeah. minutes and and i mean it moves quick and some of that stuff just kind of gets lost and it's not a huge deal but it does get a little confusing well yeah well now you're making me want to watch it again because i want to watch it under that aspect of oh he's the bad guy he's not the good guy like he's not the victim in all of this like i didn't even fathom that watching it this time around even with the ending now now that i'm remembering the ending to the movie and how it cuts to the painting i was like oh that yeah. makes total sense like right but right. yeah that's that's the one thing i've i've found issues with in in some of the fulci movies that i've watched is they really just throw you into a situation and you've got to figure it out. And it's not always the clearest, you know, definition of what's right. going on in the movie. You you kind of have to guess at a lot of things. Well, are, are you aware that this is one of what's considered the Gates of Hell trilogy? I'm and, aware and, of the Gates of Hell trilogy. I didn't know this yeah. was one of them. Yeah, this is one of them. House by the Cemetery and City of the Living Dead. Okay. And City Very of the loose. Living Dead I've seen as well. <laughs> yeah, I've seen all of those. Um, and when I watched them, I didn't know that. And trying to think back, I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess, but it's pretty loose. 
it's pretty loose. It would be yeah. cool if there were seven films that all had like a different <laughs> door. Yeah, that would be yeah. pretty rad. I mean, that's that the makings of a great like horror franchise. You True. Get seven movies, seven gates. But I think I think what the majority of people are watching the Fulci movies for is the the makeup, the gore, because they could go extreme with that stuff in these movies. Maybe where where we couldn't in the U.S. in 1981. I I did watch the movie with that in mind that it is a very low budget horror movie from a long time ago and not let so much of the bad stuff that is happening in the movie affect what, what I thought of it. Um, but the, the effects work is not that, I mean, the effects work is what you watch these movies for, for sure. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like they have their, their scene, the, the, the special effects scene Yeah, and the stuff in between is kind of less important. Right. It's like just to get you to the next thing. I mean, this is like a grindhouse movie. I mean, this yeah. is like, you know, you can't be dissecting, you know, heavy plot elements and things like that. It's it's uh, but it's got so much style. I mean, beyond just the the great effects work, it's it's really well shot, well directed, like the it's visually excellent. Like, I love the visual style of the film. I, I would say also, I just want to say like up front, I, it's my favorite Fulci I've seen so far. Um, and from what I can understand, it's considered one of his best, you know, like I, I, there's obviously everyone has their own opinion yeah. there, but I mean, having only seen the handful I have seen, I, I did enjoy this one probably more than zombie. Um, there was I city of the living dead was a weird bag for me. I don't remember much about it, but uh, I remember thinking this is really weird and bizarre, but the effects are great. And that's usually what I walk away from a Fulci film thinking. Um, but with this one, I just, I, I couldn't help but think about some of the logistical stuff that happens and some of the, uh, how some of this would make sense because, you know, we're introduced to this girl in the beginning who is possessed by the end of this opening. Uh, what was her name? The girl with the dog. Oh, uh, uh, I'm looking. Emily? No. Yes. Yes. Emily, the blonde, right? Yes. Emily, the, uh, the blonde. blind blonde. Yes. Mm -hmm. The blonde. So you, you see her in the beginning and you see the eyes change and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. again, like I, I'm not entirely sure what's happening. And then we flash to 1981 and, uh, you've got a girl who's taking over this. She's, inherited this hotel from family and now she's going to try and fix it up and, uh, and open it up. And then instantly we get a tragedy happen <laughs> the first day of trying to fix this place up. That's just always a bad guy, sign. Even this guy falling off the scaffolding looks amazing when the blood starts coming out of his mouth. I mean, you can kind <laughs> of like you you'll, as you'll watch more of these, you start of, you start to like see uh, Fulci's or, you know, what he likes to focus on Lots oh of yeah eyeballs blood flowing eyeballs <laughs> oozing melting like you know you start to see this imagery again and again but um uh it's good already i mean you already know you're gonna have a good time this right, movie right then in there this movie gave me a lot of mouth of madness in the mouth of madness vibes ah yeah yeah like well you know it's it's the it's the uh it's the Lovecraftian mm -hmm. aspect of it too, right? Uh, yep. You know, th there's this evil. You see it and you go blind. Yeah. You know, in Lovecraft, you would go crazy. You would go mad by by viewing it. But here, you you go blind, uh, or maybe ma mad and blind. Um, you know, the girl acts pretty wild. The little girl acts yeah. pretty wild after that. So, yeah, uh, I can definitely see that. Now. How about get, that this is how about that this is in Louisiana, an Italian film filmed in Louisiana? Yeah, familiar That's places. Cool. I mean, <laughs> for, sure. for, for us, especially being in the South, like, you know, we know our New Orleans very well. And I always love when movies are in New Orleans um, and they're they're drawing from an actual New Orleans story. Yeah. This yeah. Uh, Delphine Lalaurie mansion um uh more commonly known as madame blanc 
or after her third ma- I'm reading. Uh, <laughs> after her, <laughs> her third marriage as Madame Lalari was a New Orleans socialite and serial killer who's believed to have tortured and murdered slaves in her household. Wow. And uh, there's some really gnarly stuff with like how she treated those slaves and to the point where you know other people with slaves were like whoa this is too much <laughs> uh, you know what i mean yeah. so they actually i guess did like go after her similarly to that opening scene in this movie like huh. uh, at some point um but it draws on that um which is like an actual uh there's like a mansion in the french quarter that you can go visit and that's where mm-hmm. it happened whatever but um, so kind of interesting that they're kind of taking from this location that they're coming to film. And now, one thing they they introduce from the beginning here is you've got this book of Ebon that mm-hmm. is in the house that that they said you know once they d- demolish the the hotel or whatever, you see this book is a focus point. But unlike Evil Dead or something like that, where they focus on a book and they give you an explanation as to what that is, you really don't get a whole lot of the explanation of what this book is throughout this movie no. but they they go no. back to it a couple of times yeah i mean the guy was reading it right the the warlock mm-hmm. was reading it um i assume that's where he learned about the you know and how to access the the gate or whatever right yeah but it doesn't provide any kind of solution no or, or anything I, like that yeah i mean I, I get no context of what the importance of the book is at all other than the right, fact that they're reading stuff from. out of it yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then uh but th- these are examples I, I, there are the other things. books there are yeah. other books in the other movies too right like oh uh I, i'm i'm forgetting right now but in like gates of hell or house of the cemetery city of the living dead there are other there's like a different book and then maybe this book shows up again i i can't quite remember see that that also like gives me all this like with the new evil dead rise and how they are dealing with a different book book of the dead in that right 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 i'm seeing a lot of connections to that sort of stuff here yeah um but that's just another example of of them giving you something that you kind of have to put together on your own in these Mm -hmm. movies the other is is even how they introduce characters so we go to 1981 and we see that this hotel has been, you know, messed up for years. They're trying to fix it up, but the basement is flooding. And they go downstairs with the plumber guy and all of a sudden Martha comes out of the darkness. And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, my note is who the fuck is Martha and where did she come from? Like th- there's no right. introduction of her. That is her. That is your introduction to this character. I'm like, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you later learn that Martha and this other guy, I forget his name, uh, per usual, I forget everyone's name. Yeah, we're no good with names on this show, in case you're in um, case you're new here. They like came with the house. They're like the housekeepers or whatever. Yeah. So there's a guy and a, a lady. And uh she's the lady. <laughs> yeah, Martha. But she I, definitely comes across as pretty uh suspicious. Yeah, you would think right she's going to be involved in in the evil that's going to happen in this house or something, and mm-hmm. just the the way they introduce her is just completely out of nowhere, and I was a little taken aback by that. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we get this instant the the painter falls off the scaffolding. We've got a bad omens already, mm-hmm. and then like the movie just sort of develops from there, and but it's almost like it's just introducing a character and then another character and then another character it doesn't do a whole lot of building the story, which is what kind of loses me with the Fulci movies a little bit. It's just, you're watching Mm -hmm. characters for a little while. And I don't know, maybe on a rewatch, I'll get more out of what they're talking about, but I kind of find it hard to follow the story sometimes because they just kind of go off on their own little tangents. They, they do. And, and, you know, part of it, I think is just sort of the, the language of the time, like the, uh, not Italian, but, you know the the storytelling language that they the way they're making these movies i mean it just seems consistent across other movies that i've seen yeah is is two characters will have a conversation it it kind of reminds me of um some uh uh like noir films where there's so many names and stories mm-hmm. and people are like so and so did this and, da, 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 and it's all in dialogue and if you don't get it right there you're going to be like wait who's this who are they yeah. following like it it starts to it, it starts to get tricky. I, I enjoyed it more on a second watch. And mm-hmm. I would say now I'd probably enjoy it more even the next time after kind of looking at yeah. it a little more. But 
um i i, I get that for sure that you get lost i was lost kayla was lost because we i mean you, you deal with all of this stuff at the hotel and you know the the girl is just kind of like i need to get this business running because we're going to lose the hotel if we don't and all this stuff and then you get the bridge scene the first thing I'm thinking when she's driving on this bridge is why is she driving in the middle of the road? Like she's driving <laughs> right in the center of the yellow lines. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. lady, get in your lane. But, and then all of a sudden, boom, woman in the middle of the road. Right. And it's the girl from the beginning of the movie. And you're like, whoa, right. what's going on here? What's she doing here? Why is she walking in the middle of the bridge? Like and a what, mile away from. Well, the German. With a German shepherd. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> that's the, the one thing I'll go ahead and get to with like spoilery that, that we'll get into now is like, why does it, why does a, a dead woman, why does a dead blind woman need a seeing eye dog? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. And is he a real dog? Is he dead or is just she de like, cause she comes back from hell, I guess. The, right? yeah, somewhere. She, yeah. She escapes the afterlife to come back. Mm -hmm. And she says at one point she doesn't want to go back, mm -hmm. you know, assuming to the afterlife, whatever that is, hell or I assume hell. They're all in hell. Right. Everyone's in hell in this movie. I uh but yeah, did she pick up a dog when she came back, or was this dog in hell too with her? Was it her dog from before? Yeah. And all and great questions. Because because you've seen her in the opening of this movie that was 60 years prior to what we're seeing now, it's like, okay, yeah. obviously she's either a distant relative or a ghost of this woman. Uh, you think it is her because of the, the eyes that are blinded. You know, it's mm -hmm. your common sense would say this is the same woman, but where we go with her later in the, in the movie, I'm like, why is all this stuff happening to her? Like there's a particular scene later with her that I'm like, why is this even here? And we'll get to it. But right. it's, it's your introduction to the blind girl here, Emily. And she's, She's telling, uh, what's the other girl's name? Again, Liza. Uh, Liza. You know, she's like, you need to get out of this hotel. You need to leave it alone. Don't do not do what you're doing. And yeah. what's funny is everything that Emily tells Liza to do in this movie, Liza does not do at all. She completely yeah, does it, the opposite of that. And it would have been helpful if yeah. she had. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've So Liza's seeing Emily, but no one else is, right? We don't right. see Emily with anyone else. And uh, Dr. John, who we end up meeting, who mm -hmm. works at the weirdest, uh, I don't, is that, is that a hospital or a, what is this building? Okay, <laughs> it's it's only got dead people. Yeah. I mean, right? it's, a, it's a morgue of some sort. But, but it's, but they're, it's like this weird uh, interior where they're all like organized in this like super lit room that's like, it's it's really bizarre it, imagery. it's almost like they're on display as opposed to storage right. you know well, like, it feels like he's studying them not um uh -huh. not just processing them or whatever he's mm -hmm. like it, it almost seems like it's like a it's like a a, a laboratory or something you know right. what i mean like they're they're look they're studying the human body or i don't know but you're probably right it just it's just the local morgue i guess but yeah I mean, why is it so nice why does it have this like these this pillared building it's like this really nice building you know usually the morgue is like the bottom floor of the hospital or whatever right underground you know what i mean <laughs> but this is like the nicest morgue you've ever seen in, yeah in louisiana in new orleans of all places <laughs> like i'm sure the new orleans morgue is not this nice and he can park right up in front of the front door for some yeah. reason yeah he doesn't have to park in a parking lot he just pulls up <laughs> to the building <laughs> But the reason we end up in the morgue is because of the handyman, the plumber that came in the house. Joe. He's trying to, trying to figure out where this damn water is coming from and comes across this body of whoever this guy was in the beginning, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and uh, loses loses an eyeball or two uh, in, in the process. Now, this is where... Eyeballs we, poked out, yeah. Yeah, man, this is, you know, not the... This will be one of two or maybe three eyeball poppings in this movie this mm -hmm. Fulci loves his eyeballs man that's all i got to and say if you've seen zombie that yeah that's a great a great eyeball scene as well so i mean just the fact that you don't cut away of them basically scooping john's eyeball out you know, <laughs> it's it's a it's a crazy image to watch man that's again that's what i'm really look, looking for in these movies is how much gore and how much they're going to gross me out mm -hmm. at this point he's the godfather of gore yeah 
for good reason. It is excellent gore. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so so Joe the plumber's been killed uh by this uh what is his name? I wish I could find his name. I don't know which one he is. The 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 warlock we'll call him. Okay. We'll right, the him. warlock. Okay, so Warlock, warlock Sh- Schwick. Is that his name? Schwick? Artist and Warlock Schwick. Schwick. Oh, yeah. Works. Schwick? Schweik? Schweik. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so his 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 wife and his daughter come to... I, I guess the wife comes to a, to put his clothes on mm-hmm. uh, for to be buried. So right. this guy has not been... You know, no, no funeral home has cleaned this guy up or anything like that. Maybe this is a funeral home. That's where you would probably dress someone to be in a casket. I don't right. know. So she comes in. The mom leaves the girl in the waiting room. Mom comes in. And then she sees something. We don't get to see what she sees. Nope. Right. But that's our like, you know, it. we we only see them see it. Right. Whatever right. they're looking at is so insane that it'll make you pour acid on your face you know or (laughs) gouge your own eyes out or whatever well that's the that's the thing about this scene is when the girl finally gets in and sees what's happening it's like she doesn't pour acid on her face it spills but she's just right in the exact spot where it needs to be right where that that stuff's gonna get her uh Mm -hmm. and then you know the girl sees all of this which again is i mean that's traumatizing enough but where we go with her later is also like (laughs) jesus christ well, that's uh, the kind of gnarly shit you see in these old movies that you don't see anymore. And yeah. maybe for good reason, but it's certainly effective. I mean, you're like, wow, that little girl just saw first her dead father, whose eyes are all jacked, like, you know. Yeah. Yes. And then her mom's face is melting in acid. That's pretty gnarly. And Now, one thing they do in this morgue scene where you got her dressing the corpse and whatnot You've also got the the corpse of the 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 warlock guy there. Yes. yes. And I kept waiting for something with him to happen. <laughs> yeah. And shockingly enough, it, it, it doesn't ever happen. Like they never go for later, that scare. But yeah, yeah. yeah but, but here, I the kept waiting for it and kept waiting for it, and it never happened. The threat and, is there, and it's effective. Yeah. Yeah. And you're you're totally expecting something to happen with him, and then when that shit with the acid happens, you're just like, "Whoa, that's not what I was expecting to happen at all." Right, because it makes no sense. Right? Why would there be a giant glass like vase full of acid <laughs> on the top shelf? <laughs> <laughs> Why? But you know, I I I think at some point, like hell is bleeding over into Earth in this movie, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So there, I I feel like moments where things don't make sense. Certainly, when they leave the later in the film, when they sort of like leave the house and all of a sudden they're back at the house, mm-hmm. you start to ask yourself, okay, what are they experiencing? Are they where they think they are? Yeah, right. And I think that's where budgetary constraints probably hurt the movie, and and that's in that side of the storytelling is because you're literally you don't get a good visualization of how they're moving through this town or space and time, you know, there's, there's, there's that moment at the end. Yeah. Where you were, where they're suddenly back in the house and you're like, wait a minute, what, what's happening. (laughs) Right. I I mean, well, that one, they were just as confused. I mean, there was no missing shot of them getting on a bus. They, they went downstairs and they were in the basement all the time. Yeah. They they teleported from the hospital to the basement, which makes, and they started in the basement. So uh, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but I feel like when they're in the hospital, they've been in the basement the whole time they're in hell or whatever like yeah uh they're already there um but i i didn't want to get go too far because i i wanted to point out this one guy again i'm thinking this is a, like a lab because mm-hmm. the one guy has a brainwave machine yeah and they and hook he, it to the 60 year 60 year old decayed body uh-huh. they hook up a brainwave machine to to it like that's not a thing no, like that's it's not. That's like a weird sci-fi element in this movie. So th- is this place like a some kind of lab where they're studying cadavers and things like that? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, you're adding another good question to the pile of good questions we're having for this movie. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a particular point where, um, you know, 
Emily and what's her name? Liza go to Emily's house, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, have a cup of tea and talk about what's going on in, in the town and whatnot. And uh, you, you fully think that Emily is this character that Liza is seeing, but then we, we gradually get to a point where the doctor goes to this place and this is another rundown house with, with nobody right. in it. Right. Um, and I think at some point she sees that book of what is it? Book of E E Rob or whatever in, in the house. And then it disappears. I thought she saw it in the room 36. You know what? That might be it. She yeah. saw it in the room 36 and it disappears. She's like, right. Cause she has the vision of the guy nailed to the wall in the bathroom. Right. She brings the doctor in and the, it's not there. And the doctor thinks she's kind of crazy, but um, yeah, that's when the book goes missing. But then they end up at a bookstore later, and she finds the book in the store. She sees it through the window. Yeah. But when she goes in, it's not that book. Oh, okay. Right. Makes sense. Well, what I wanted to bring up with the the bookstore is the guy in the bookstore. (laughs) Giggling bookstore owner? (laughs) It's like the guy in the bookstore, what is up? What is this guy's deal? (laughs) He's just sitting there giggling at everything. (laughs) He's creepy for sure, man. Creepy. Yeah, and I'm also wondering, like, is any of this real? Like, at what point does it stop being real and it's just her losing her mind or being, you know, poisoned by hell or whatever? It's pretty loose. I mean, it it could be it could be hell starting to trickle out and like mess with her head. Um, True. And I think what might might make it a little confusing with these movies, again, the, the, the lower budget, how old they are and whatnot, but we're so used to seeing when they're, when they do a shift in time or a shift into a different dimension or something like that in our movies, we can kind of see a shift in cinematography or lighting or something changes that gives us the feeling that that's what's right. going on where well, the flashback in this movie is sepia. Yeah. I mean, that, but that's the only time you see the fl- is, is the sepia right. flashbacks. What, what I guess is most confusing for me in this movie is that, how they're moving through whatever dimension they're in, I guess, right. you know, how, how they're moving from the house to the basement, to the hospital, all that stuff. And right. yeah, I mean, th- it, you could explain it in a way that they were always in the basement and they're just in hell. That makes sense. But again, like I, I don't think movies that were made for that cheap at that time had a good way of kind of giving you an idea of that's what's going on right now, you know, because everything right. sort of just looks the same. As yeah, far as well, yeah, and I mean, I think you can kind of, you could say, oh well, you know, he wants you to be confused. He yeah. wants the viewer to be just as like perplexed as the character and that kind of stuff. You could also look at it as he doesn't care. Yeah, and he's just ready to get to the next kill scene. True. I I don't know. I I, I have no idea, but the next kill scene is pretty awesome. Uh, the her Liza's friend uh the the guy who's gonna like work on the house or something I don't know if he's like a carpenter or designer interior designer whatever the guy gets on the ladder and finds the book oh yeah 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 yeah. okay I I forgot about this guy dude I mean this okay so he 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 finds there's more floors to the house or more space in the plans of the house he's struck down by some kind of force falls on the ground and then tarantulas come out and start eating his eyes. <laughs> now this lips is and his tongue. <laughs> I mean, this scene is awesome. I this shit is and and you know what? I also this is the first time I want to call out the score here. The score in this movie when when it hit, starts to like drop some like seventies like when when things get violent, yeah. we start we get this like electronica like weird like it's intense and and these spiders uh, i love this scene dude I it's love it. it's strange because it is it's it's a it's music they have a couple of needle drops in this that are music that just come out of left field <laughs> like you said electronic 70s fucking disco sound and shit yeah and it almost feels out of place in a movie like this but it fits for some reason. Like I, like I think I, I it, it Argento does it too. I mean, there, there's there's scenes in like Suspiria that are like really scary, and instead of like suspenseful music, you get this sort of almost like exciting, uh, you know, 
like it's celebrating the moment more than you know trying to make it seem terrifying yeah right i can see that it's like you know uh the 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 japanese film house uh not Uh, not not the not the sean cunningham one from the 80s but the one that was in the (laughs) 70s like this movie is fucking bizarre but it uses really weird musical cues to make you just feel uncomfortable and I, i you know that's that's kind of what I put together this time because I've watched, you know, those handful of Fulci movies that I have seen. That is a weird part of those, those, that style of these Italian horror films is they just kind of interject that stuff in there and you, you either have to roll with it or it's just going to annoy the shit out of you. Um, when the lady, when that lady we were talking about drains the tub and, and you find Joe the plumber in there, like the music hits there, like those music uh, be- like moments are so rad. They ratchet up the badassery of this movie. I, badassery is the word. I, it's like fucking metal. You know what I mean? Like there's like <laughs> shit starts going down and you're like, got this music kicking in and like spiders are eating some guy's face. It's, it's excellent. I mean, and see, this, and see, these are the moments I feel like Jason would appreciate. See, and, and, and that's where I think, I know Jason a little bit better than you do because <laughs> I I feel like Jason would hate all of that stuff in this movie. <laughs> like I, I think that's why like he doesn't like having conversations about movies like this because we will geek out over this sort of stuff where he's just sort of like that's funny. This is stupid. Like I don't like he he just doesn't understand when they make weird choices like that or something, man. Like uh but but yeah, like I, I was watching this movie under that lens too. I was like, so what is it? that I think Jason doesn't like about these movies. And I think it's the weird choices and things like that. Plus the acting's not always the greatest, but Jason loves a lot of movies with bad actors. True. Very true. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to talk about the scene where we've got Emily and her dog in her house. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then all these, all these bodies start coming back to life and, the portal to hell is opening up and, and and we're starting to get to our big finale of this movie. But there's this entire scene that takes place with her and the dog and the dog is warning her that these, these, these things are here for her and whatnot, but she's a ghost. Like I, <laughs> this whole scene of them ripping her apart is like, well, she's, the dog rips her apart. Right. Well, yeah, you're right. I completely forgot about that. The dog is possessed. <laughs> And then, and the whole time I'm like, don't let anything happen to this dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dog ends up being the one that kills her. But still, like, hey, what's another movie where where a dog kills its blind owner? A uh, seeing eye dog kills its owner. I don't know. Suspiria. Oh, I don't remember that. The blind piano player. The 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 the, the witches put a spell or a hex mm. or whatever. The blind piano player is walking home with his dog, and the dog kills him that's right that's right yeah i've only seen suspiria once and that was a i can't remember the exact year but it was before this yeah and what's funny about suspiria is i've seen suspiria one time and i watched it the night before hurricane michael oh no (laughs) (laughs) uh so you need to watch it again yeah because i've watched it for the second time recently and it's really great have you seen the remake Yes, I watched the remake after that quite recently as well, and it was okay. But I much prefer the original. I mean, they're I, very different. I mean, I, yeah, I respect that the the remake went really different mm-hmm. with it. Like, mm-hmm. it obviously hits some of the same beats, but they do a completely different thing. I think the biggest issue with the remake that I have is I knew that that was Tilda Swinton as the guy the whole time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just so like, I was just, I was like, that's Tilda Swinton in makeup. I just kept, <laughs> I couldn't get that out of my head. That is weird. Yeah. And, yeah. and cause it's clearly someone in makeup. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it, that, that, that final shot in that movie, all the shit that goes down in the, in the studio is like, Whoa, Jesus. But, um, but yeah, the end of this movie is fucking insane. Like you got the spiders that attack, attack dude. And like, the only thing I will say about the spider scene, you can't tell me that it, it could have, it could have moved a little faster. Like they go to those shots of the spiders walking really slow a few too many times. I yeah, I, that's kind of the the language of you know the era. I think some of I, I feel that way too in a lot of these movies where I'm like, okay, I get it. Like 
yeah. move on. Like you're you're setting this up. I get it. I get it. Like I was getting flashbacks. We're just a little of, impatient as modern viewers. So. I was getting flashbacks of frogs. How they would always cut back to the frogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> B roll of the frogs. But when the yeah. when the when the spiders finally do get on the body and start tearing it to shreds, yeah, that's some crazy shit. Like when he starts ripping yeah. the tongue out and everything. Yeah, yeah, and uh, y- you can only imagine. Kayla was like, "What? Oh my <laughs> god! What are they doing now? Ah!" He already ripped his bit his eyeball, and then like, "Oh, let's go in his mouth too." Start eating his tongue. There's there's a great, you know, obviously, the fake spiders don't look super real, but like there's a really nice mixture of like a fake face a real face real spiders Mm -hmm. and fake spiders and you know you'll see a fake spider and a fake uh, face for a second but then it kind of switches and you can kind of see there is some real realness in there they do a nice job i mean it's it's pretty cool i do i did watch a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff and the only thing that the blu-ray that i have has is just sort of some interviews with some of the cast um, but the only thing I really picked up on that I remembered from the behind the scenes stuff was whoever they had that was going to be in that scene with the spiders was deathly afraid of spiders. <laughs> and they they had to like get a body double and whatnot to switch it out because the guy was so freaked out about it. I mean, they're so close up on him, you can't really even tell yeah. at that point. But and he's not in the movie much anyway. So But there is a lot of detail to some of the the makeup. Mm-hmm. When they're tearing the faces apart, like they oh, put yeah. a, they put like you can see like little individual hairs, like a, a five o'clock shadow in the face. Like they do their work on like making some of that stuff look yeah. real as real as they could. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the violence is is great. You know, going back to the beginning where they're whipping him with the chain or whatever, and it's just like ripping like wounds yeah. onto him. It's just so uh, uh, gruesome and and visceral. You know, there's so much blood and dripping and pouring and and it's ratcheted up and it's effective. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's I, we we skipped over Martha, the, the woman who appeared out of nowhere earlier, like yep. she gets her head pushed through a nail. <laughs> and of I course, love that sh- and yeah, it pops eyeball. her eyeball out. <laughs> yeah. I love that shot uh, from like the wall. So you mm-hmm. see the the nail coming out and then you see her head and his hand and his face like. It's like a, you know, I'll yeah. try to do it on this. And he's like pushing the fe- the head onto the nail. It's really yeah. like, there's a lot of really creative camera angles. Uh, that I love the lighting in a lot of this movie. Um, it's funny. We, we watched this. Uh, and the next night we watched the Marvels. Mm. Um, and uh which you know had some fun moments and i really went in with like the best attitude i could have it's i've right. waited a while to watch this but um it's just like this is bathed in light like like everything is so tv lit fully lit like mm-hmm. where's the drama like give me like we were just watching uh beyond and and it's so dramatically lit so beautifully lit in in so many instances it's just so much contrast. I, I, I really like between, and, and I want to see more. And like I said, I, I've watched a few others that I'm failing to remember, but I've really gotten into Fulci, Argento, Bava. And I just, I love the style of these yeah. movies. Like I don't even really need at this point, the, the, the rest of it to be all that great. I just like being there. Yeah. I just like, Okay, I'm in the 70s in Italy. I'm in Rome. I'm happy to be here. I don't even care what happens. And it's funny <laughs> and it's funny that, you know, that I haven't ever gotten into the Italian horror stuff or Jason isn't into it because when you watch Friday the 13th and all of the early horror slasher stuff, they're just doing the same things these movies are doing. Just they're not far apart, no. Yeah, I mean, I I got so many like there's cinematography in this movie that looks exactly like Friday the 13th. Like, <laughs> like you could put stills of this movie next to stills of Friday the 13th in certain points, and you wouldn't be able to tell it was two different movies. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's just, I think, again, you know, had we had we seen these movies when we were younger, they would left a more, more of an impression on us because of the gore that's in them. Right. You know, there's there's so many movies we love now that we love for that nostalgia of that first watch and the gore that happened in it or the 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 fighting or whatever. Like, 
you know, Conan probably isn't as good as we make it out to be, but we love that movie because we watched it our whole lives. Sure, you know? nostalgia, yeah, yeah. So if you had nostalgia for Fulci, Fulci's stuff and, and, and you know, Suspiria and Argento, all that stuff, you know, I could see... I could see people's love for this stuff, but when you're coming into it a little later in life, you sort of have to go in knowing this isn't going to be as good as I think it's going to be at first. I, I'm probably going to hard I'm, to know what to expect. And, yeah. and, and you, I watched a bunch of these before I really got into the Argento stuff. And then mm-hmm. I watched a bunch of the Argento stuff. Then I got into the Baba stuff and then I'm coming back to this now. And, um, yeah, I think it was just experience in the time period, experience in the genre, experience in the country of origin, that kind of thing. Right. It's just it's just easier to watch than it was the first time. You know, right. I, it's just the first time I had I I have all these other expectations. I don't I don't know what is going, but now I'm like worrying less about certain things and mm-hmm. really just kind of enjoying it for what it is and Yeah. Um I think, you know, uh, the majority of us are probably going into movies with what is the entertainment value of this movie? And in some in some aspects, like this might not be the sort of entertainment you're looking for. Therefore, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Um, I'm watching movies now more under the light of the filmmaking. How did they accomplish this shot? How did they get these scenes to be as effective as they are? And even for movies, you know, they're they're doing what they're doing in these movies with such a micro budget. Like you couldn't even do this with, yeah. the, cheap, with the cheapest movies they make now. You couldn't make these movies. And it's just crazy to see what they were able to accomplish with so little back then. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the Fulci stuff in particular is, you know, very low budget. So Now, the one thing I find interesting about the Italian stuff is how they just sort of had this like, free dealing willy nilly like you could make a sequel to any movie as long as you included certain aspects uh do you know what i'm talking about like uh yeah you're talking about how zombie is a is a sequel to night of the living dead in some capacity and right i i forget all the all the details of of how it is and so how it's, they connect, but yeah it's there is apparently like of- if if you're using the same sort of imagery as a movie that has already been done, you can technically call it a sequel to that movie as long as it's like the same in story and in concept or whatever. Mm. So that's how they're able to take a movie like zombie and say, it's the sequel to Dawn of the dead when it has absolutely nothing to do with that original Dawn of the dead movie. Yeah. Well, we get some zombies in this movie. Yeah, that's another thing about about the Fulci stuff I've seen is like you may start with some supernatural stuff, but you're going to end up with zombies by the end of this movie, <laughs> and that's with They're most straight of up stuff. zombies, and they can only be taken down with a headshot as well. So they established <laughs> that very clearly. <laughs> Kayla was screaming. She's like, "Throw him in the head!" Like, There's like yeah, they, belly shots after he just dropped like five. Zombies yeah, they, they clearly established that you have to shoot them in the head, and he continues to shoot these guys in the chest. It's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I thought you figured this out 10 yeah. bodies ago. <laughs> You're a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if I had any reservations about this movie watching it, it was the ending definitely put me in a different place because I respect the fact that they decided to go with the whole, oh, no. No happy ending. There, there, nothing that's happening is what you think is happening. The, these people are fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, the, the main thing I wanted to bring up towards the end of this movie is when they're back in the morgue or whatever it is, and the little girl shows back up. Oh, she, right, right. She was blinded earlier and is possessed mm-hmm. or whatever is happening to these people now. And then when she shows up at the end, he fucking blows her head off yes <laughs> yes i was not expecting the the <laughs> goddamn splat that we got with that one <laughs> that's what i'm talking about i mean you don't get movies like that anymore you <laughs> i i mean i maybe you do i don't know where they are but uh no these old 70s movies they'll shoot a kid you know i yeah. mean john carpenter did it uh but yeah this one exploding like, head and, and, exploding head. and yeah, I mean, what's funny is when she gets possessed or blinded or whatever it is that happens to her, she disappears after that. And then you don't yeah. see her again until this scene, basically. 
And then all right, of a sudden, she's it's really only there so we could blow her head up. Yeah. And it's just the, the fact that that was her sole purpose for the end of this movie was to, to blow her head off of her shoulders. Well, uh, every every person that was killed throughout the movie is back now as a zombie, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get Joe back, Joe the plumber, you get the the uh, painter uh, that falls off the scaffolding. You get, right. the, you know, like everybody, the mom with the melted face, like you kind of get the whole everybody's back for this yep. last chase scene. And then we get the crazy modern hospital that it also has uh, some like a uh, bad English signage on there. What does it say? Like, uh, I don't know if I saw that. Do not entry or something oh, like that. Yeah, there was something weird like yeah, that. I was like, that's it, not know, right. Yeah, it's like, you know, Italian people are making this. They screwed up the sign that says do not enter. It says do not entry. <laughs> But but I, I love that all this crazy shit's going down and all of a sudden, like we've mentioned already, like they, they end up back in the basement of this house. They it's just like, go down the stairs and all of a sudden they're going down the basement stairs. They're back in the house. They did they ever leave? I don't know. Have they and, have they been in hell for half this movie? I, I don't know. Right. And this is what I mean by like the change of visuals or change of cinematography. Like they do that at the end of this movie. Mm -hmm. It's it's blatantly obvious that they are now in the depths of hell and they are fucked. Right, they go through the foggy doorway, and now yeah. they're in this wasteland that is the imagery from the painting, right? From the and warlock painted, and again, like you telling me that at the beginning of our talk, I was like, "Oh, that's why they focused so much on the painting at the end." Yeah. Whenever they fade into that, and it's 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 a picture of what they see in hell, mm -hmm. and I was like. Oh, fuck. Eric's right. <laughs> and that's, again, that's another thing I love about doing the podcast with you guys. Oh, is after, yeah. after we you talk about this things. stuff, yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, I see this movie in a completely different light now. I almost always like a movie more after we've talked about it for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. It almost if, always makes it better. Even if it's a movie that we, you know, didn't enjoy or weren't really that into, by the time we get done talking about it, I'm like, oh, I... I see something different now. It kind of makes me yeah. want to go back and watch that movie again. For sure. You know? For sure. That's, and that's the magic of, of the conversation, right? Yeah. That's and that's sort of fun. And that's sort of what we're going to get back to as we move forward in VHS falls. We're going to get back to that feeling of watching a movie, talking about it like you did with your friends, like, you know, Saturday afternoons, you get together with your friends, you rented a movie and then you talked about it. what do you think? How did you like it? Did you dislike it? I want to get back to that feeling of the show. And I think that's what we're going to start going for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, simplifying it yeah bit. big time just and you know the, we'll about. we'll still talk about our all, almost famous people and all that stuff but you know the gist of all that now and if you don't you can go back to listen to our old episodes and if you want to know what almost famous means you can learn back on the old episodes but if we say somebody's almost famous you'll know what we're talking about go back and listen to the old stuff <laughs> but but yeah i'm i'm glad you you picked this movie and i'm glad we talked about it i i I picked up the Blu-ray around uh, Black Friday time, so I've been itching to watch it. And this isn't really one of those movies Jenny would want to sit down and watch with me. So I'm glad we we picked it and I was able to watch it and talk about it with you. Yeah, I also wanted to mention you had said you what was the one you bought? Um, the 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 one from like 1990. Oh, the Cat in the Brain. We were going to talk about Cat in the Brain, but apparently there's a lot of like Fulci history and stuff in that, that we're not super aware of. Right. We need to see more Fulci. He plays himself in the movie. I I've never seen it. I don't know what it's about, but yeah. he plays himself, but I wanted to mention that, uh, and I'm just going to have to click on it here, but he was, uh, he was in the beyond as well. He was a uh, town clerk. <laughs> i don't i i don't remember seeing him but i just saw it on imdb so he is in the movie so i wouldn't be surprised if he was the guy laughing his ass off in the bookstore <laughs> that would have been great that would have been perfect. <laughs> but that's kind of our feelings on the beyond uh if you were going to rate this movie from one to a hundred eric where would you what what number would you place on this movie i'm on such a like i'm vibing so hard on these movies lately it it might be <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say 80, 80, 80 out of 100. That's pretty high. I was I was coming into the the conversation sitting at around 52, 52 ish. But oh. after our conversation, I'm willing to bump it up another 10 points. I'll go 62 on on the beyond for me. Nice. I will say this is probably my favorite Fulci that I've seen. I've seen maybe six or seven of them. Uh, so there's still more to see, but. Uh, 
I I like this one the most, so you know my other fault she's would probably go down from that eighty. I just I, I I felt so good after this watch. I was like, man, I I really <laughs> dug that. I enjoyed the music and the I don't know, man. It it spoke to me for some and, reason. And so. the rewatch, you know, when I when I do get around to rewatching it again, I'll probably have a better opinion of it then and change my whole outlook. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts once you for, do. But for now, uh, I mean, based on the Fulci I've seen, it's uh, it's sitting at about a 62 for me now. So, All right. uh, well, what do you guys think of Fulci and the Beyond? We'd like to know in the comments yes, below. Please. please talk to please. us. Let us know what you think of Fulci. What you think of our opinions? Are we completely wrong about Fulci? We would love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. We've had some loving comments lately, so we're looking for some more of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, we're going to come back next time, and we're talking about another pick that Eric picked. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you the tagline for the movie, so that'll put you in suspense of what we're talking about. If you know this tagline, you know what movie we're going to be talking about next week. And the tagline is, He's every woman's dream and one woman's nightmare. <laughs> oh, that's not immediately clear, I don't think. No, well, I don't think it is. I'd be surprised if anyone guesses that one. Honestly. It's. Uh, I'll also say it's from 1990. Those are the oh, only I'm clues just... I'll give. 1990. <laughs> All right. Made it a lot easier, but that's fine. All right. <laughs> but that is the movie we will be talking about when we come back with our next episode. But until then, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can join us next time we talk about some of the movies that we've missed or loved from our childhood. Until then, be kind. Rewind. Rewind.